Hello friends, welcome to Electrical Engineering Convention. This is our third video. We are going to see the RF transceiver block diagram or the architecture. We are doing a playlist for the block diagrams and the architectures in uh, communication that are related to RF mostly. So now let's get into the video. So RF transceiver. What is a transceiver? A transceiver is basically a device that can transmit and receive signals at the same time or at different time instances. So usually where do you see these transceivers applied in your real life? You can see it you can see it on the radios, you can see it on the wired telephones that we used a long time ago and we can also see it on our cell phones uh, on a daily basis and we can also see it on the Wi-Fi mo modems that we use. So it, this finds its application in a lot of lot of things. Now let's get into the actual block diagram. So the part at the at the top is the receiver and the part at the bottom is the transmitter. So it all starts from here. So what it does is we have a digital signal which is modulated. We'll discuss about the digital modulations basic block diagram in the next videos. So now let's assume or now uh, take into account that we are giving a digitally modulated uh, digital signal here as the input to the DAC. DAC is nothing but a digital to analog converter. What it does is it converts the digital signal into analog signals. So we have an analog signal here and the analog signal passes to the low pass filter. The purpose of the low pass filter is to cut off the high frequency signals which are not necessary. So this low pass filter gives the output as the baseband signal rejecting all the high frequencies which are not necessary and this is again boosted using a IF amplifier so this signal here that goes past the filter is called as the IF signal and the IF signal is mixed with the local oscillator which is generated from the PLL and the VCO these two signals are mixed that is uh, IF uh, plus LO and IF minus LO and this gives the RF output. The RF signal is band pass uh, is passed through a band pass filter meaning that as I already told the mixer is going to make two different copies right which is IF plus or minus LO. So one of the signal is necessary and another signal is not so what we are going to do is we are going to pass it through a bandpass filter and limit the desired, fre desired frequency and we are going to pass it on to the power amplifier the main purpose of the power amplifier is just to boost the signal so that it can be transmitted towards a longer distance so we all know that when a signal is transmitting uh, through the free space through the antenna it is going to um, to be affected by um, uh, by the propagation so it is going to lose a lot of power so before uh, it reaches the receiver it should have a little bit of power at least so that the receiver can detect it so in order to facilitate that we are going to make the power amplifier and boost the signals output and we are giving it to the duplexer the purpose of the duplexer is to switch between two different modules so in this case this block is the rx tx block and this block is the rx block and it is going to switch the antenna between the tx and the rx so whenever we are transmitting a signal the duplexer throws the switch to the tx and the tx is connected to the antenna and whenever it is receiving the duplexer is duplexer's switch is thrown to the rx block where the antenna goes to the part of the receiver now and it is no more a part of the tx so this shows that the duplexer is a three port device three port device 
the duplexer here has to be designed with high uh, isolation the reason being if you are receiving any signals and if the receiving signals are not desired and they are passing through the duplexer in this direction so whenever TX is transmitting it should go this way and it should not come in the opposite way so if it comes in the opposite way which means that the PA might be damaged so in order to prevent that the duplexer should have a good isolation good isolation so this is the TX block so once we throw the switch to the RX the antenna gets connected to the RX and as soon as the antenna is connected to the RX we are receiving the signal and the signal that we receive uh, as we already mentioned the signal is going to be a weak signal so the signal received should be boosted using an LNA and apologies for drawing the LNA in the reverse order so it should be this way so the LNA boosts the signal and after boosting the signal we are going to pass through the bandpass filter so why do we pass it through a bandpass filter this is an important thing on the receivers or the transceivers architecture we'll discuss about the ganging circuit in a minute but after the signal is band pass, uh, band limited we are going to get the RF signal that is desired and after we get the RF signal we combine it on, on a mixer with the LO which is generated from the PLL and it is going to give copies of IF the copies meaning similar to this um, it is going to give two IF values which is RF plus or minus LO right similar to TX so this is TX and this is RX so we are going to have two sets of values here and we are going to pass it through the amplifier uh, the output is IF so we call it IF amplifier and this one has a, needs to be designed with a good filtering mechanism or the selectivity of the filter should be good so that we reject all the higher frequencies that we don't want and we give the output of the filter to the ADC the purpose of the ADC is to convert these analog signals because the RF signal is an analog signal we are going to convert RF and IF signals so we are going to convert them into digital using the ADC and the ADC's output is given to the demodulation so which is the digital communication block which we will discuss next so this is the basics of the block diagram now let's come to the gang tuned circuit so the gang tuned circuit is what it does is it connects the bandpass filter and the PLL or the local oscillator frequency generating unit the reason why these two are ganged are uh, ganged meaning they are attached together why these two are attached together meaning if you are getting a RF signal because the antenna cannot differentiate which signal to receive it is going to receive all the frequencies so let's assume that we are getting multiple RF frequencies in a wide variety of ranges so this bandpass filter is used to filter the necessary frequency let's say our necessary frequency is 10 gigahertz so for 10 gigahertz we should have an LO which correspondingly works with the 10 gigahertz right so we call that LO1 so whenever we get a 10 gigahertz the LO1 gets activated since they are ganged or tuned together so it generates the corresponding LO and we get the IF so whenever if we need 12 gigahertz this is another frequency right so now we are going to going to generate a, another LO frequency because the frequency of interest is now different so this is the purpose of the gang tune circuit this gang tune circuit will not be present in most of the architectures that you see so this is one advantage of uh, RF transceiver now let's discuss uh, some of the importance of the blocks so so as I previously told the block at the bottom is the TX where it goes to the antenna and from the antenna to the diplexer and from the LNA to ADC it is the RX 
So the LNA is a low noise amplifier. It is a small signal amplifier, meaning it is going to amplify smaller signals into the bigger signals only on the linear range because that is the range of our interest so it is going to do that it is always the first block of the receiver why should a low noise amplifier be the first block of a receiver why can't it be a bandpass filter or some other things the reason is the noise factor the noise factor is defined by the ratio of signal to noise ratio of the input to that of the signal to noise ratio of the output so if you want to have a our purpose is to achieve low noise figure so in order to achieve a low noise factor your signal to noise ratio of the output should be high so if the SNR of the output is high which means that the ratio of SNR of input and the SNR of output will be lower so this is the noise factor now let's see what a cascaded noise factor is or the noise figure is a cascaded noise figure is the noise figure that we calculate for the entire system that is the entire TX or the entire RX so the noise factor for the RX here is determined by the LNA so that's what I told it is the first block of the receiver because so this is the formula for the cascaded noise figure it is F1 meaning the noise figure of the first block plus F2 minus 1 which is the second block divided by the gain of the first block plus F3 minus 1 by G1, G2 and it goes on until nth block. So how many blocks, how many ever blocks we have, it goes all the way to that. So if you see, the first block's noise factor is not affected by any gain or something, but the next block is a ratio of the gain of the first block. And if you go to the third block, it is the ratio of the gains of the first two blocks so this value this entire third third element is going to be lesser compared to the second element and as it goes on it's going to be lower a lot so the first value determines the noise factor of the entire block so that's why we need to have a low noise amplifier as the first block of the receiver whereas the power amplifier is a large signal amplifier meaning we are going to have a RF signal which is already powerful because of amplification here and uh, this, sig this signal is going to be further boosted by using a power amplifier boosted meaning it is already a bigger signal but we are going to make it more stronger so that we can transmit over a longer distance whereas the PA is affected by non-linearity we'll discuss what non-linearity and the effects of non-linearity in the coming videos but for now, remember this, the PA is going to cause non-linearity to the signals. So this is the basic block diagram of a RF transceiver. But when we are conceiving, considering an RF transceiver, we are going to be blocked by another important, um, important metric, which is called as the image rejection or the image frequency. So the image frequency usually appears in this section. Uh, the mixer, uh, bandpass filter and the PL. We'll discuss about that in detail now. So I've just, inter uh, I've just uh, made a graphical representation. So the x-axis is the frequencies and the y-axis is the signal levels so the first thing uh, I'm, I am I have just this is how you interpret the signals on a spectrum analyzer so we are having a so this is this is from the perspective of the receiver receiver side this is not from the transmitter side so let's see that so we are having a received RF signal we call it Omega RF and we are having a LO frequency which is given as the in second input to the mixer we call it omega L0 the omega L0 is, is omega RF plus omega IF right so what the mixer does is it mixes omega RF and omega LO together and make copies of it which means it creates omega RF plus omega L0 and omega RF minus omega LO 
so these are the output signals from the mixer so it generates one omega f so this is the desired signal and it also generates 2 omega rf plus omega f this is undesired we don't need this and it's also far away from omega f we can easily filter it out this is undesired signal but what if we are receiving so as i already told the antenna will not be able to differentiate what frequency it is receiving right so let's assume that we are going to receive another frequency which is omega r f2 where this omega r f2 is a function of omega r f plus 2 omega i f which means this is the new received signal and we are going to mix it with the yellow so now let's see what happens if we mix it with the yellow so omega yellow is omega r f plus omega i f omega r f plus omega i f and we are mixing it with the uh, omega r f 2 which is nothing but plus omega r f plus 2 omega i f so we will be generating plus and minus of these two signals right so when you add it you get 2 omega r f plus 3 omega i f which is the signal here which is far away from the uh, desired frequency which is omega rf so we can easily neglect it or uh, we can easily filter it out but consider the other frequency that we are going to receive which is the negative of this so omega rf omega if minus omega rf minus 2 omega if so we have two minuses here which means that the omega rfs are going to cancel and we are going to be left with minus omega if so this minus omega if is going to be on the same place as this one so our system will not be able to differentiate these two signals so this is what we call it as omega image which is nothing but the image frequency we can easily eliminate this problem by having a rf filter with good selectivity uh, so we call the filter as the image reject filter so this is the same filter as this one so what we have to do here is we have to make sure this filter is tunable and this filter has good rejection to omega r f2 whenever it is operating on omega rf1 so it has to reject omega rf2 which generates image frequency of if whenever it is working on omega rf1 so this is the basics of rf transceiver and the image frequency and we also discussed about the purpose of the la as the first block of the receiver and the power amplifier as the last block of the dx so if you have any other questions please post it on the comments if you like the video like comment and share it and please subscribe to electrical engineer convention thanks a lot